The Veto. The Veto. The Veto. The Veto. Yes, this, this is their own government doing this to its own people. This video is also from homes. Apparently a rocket fired by government forces hit the building. We're asking for the UN to help us. We're asking for the Arab League to help us. Anyone, anyone, anyone who's got any kind of humanity in their heart, do something about this. What do you want the peace of mind more than 220 soldiers in the night that will be sent to the war? I deny categorically and equivocally all these wrong references to bloodshed and killings taking place in my country the way uh, they are described by the media. We've seen countless videos of children with broken I, bodies I have, returned after weeks in detention. We've seen people being shot at as they try to retrieve the dead and wounded bodies of their friends and families on the street. And we've seen protests after protests broken up with tear gas and security forces uniformed and not firing live ammunition to crowds. Are all of these lies? I have also a countless of other videos showing exactly the opposite. I'm not denying that we have losses of life uh, lives over there. I'm saying that we should be objective in our approach while analyzing what's going on in Syria. What's going on in Syria is that we do have an opposition, legitimate national opposition, and we are listening to their claims, but at the same time we do have armed terrorist groups that are resisting the uh, Syrian forces. Ceux qui sont contre, those against, abstention, abstentions, le projet de résolution, the draft resolution, pas adopté, has not been adopted. We're not animals, we're human beings, we're asking for help. We're asking for your help. The vetoes by Russia and China of what was already a watered-down version of a resolution condemning the violence seem to have emboldened the regime. How many more chemical attacks do there need to be? How many more children need to wash up on shores or end up covered in dust? The veto of Russia and China against a UN Security Council resolution condemning Syria and demanding change, he said that itself was a crime against humanity because at the end of the day, the Russians had given a green light to Bashar al-Assad to intensify his crackdown, Suzanne. But the thousands still there still suffer under the withering attacks of the regime. For CNN, Ian Lee, Cairo. Anderson, you are biased and taking side, and you shouldn't do that because I'm you taking are the side of the truth. And, and, and I, I got to say, I just think you, what you're saying, you, just this you is have not, not offered any proof. This is not the truth. I am afraid this is not the truth. You are reporting what somebody uh, told you. <laughs> this is, this shouldn't be done on CNN. The veto. So now we've just arrived uh, in Damascus, in Syria. In 2011, filmmaker and journalist Rafik Lotev returned to Syria after 16 years in the US with explosive information. He had tracked the plans to foment a revolution in Syria on the Paltok virtual platform. The fabrication school, it was in Bavar. Another sovereign nation targeted for regime change by the neocons in Washington, London, Paris, Tel Aviv, Riyadh, Qatar, and Istanbul. Nobody believe anything can happen in Syria because Syria is a non-religion country and we have freedom of religion and we have a lot of good things in Syria. It's make you sure that's nothing going to happen in Syria. Syria, a seven-year war based on lies, 
The early protests in Syria were infiltrated and manipulated. Some of the poorest communities across Syria were exploited and weaponized. Corporate media in the West disappeared marches in support of President Assad while they focused on the peaceful protests that rapidly descended into mob violence. Organized chaos was the result. People gathered in the mosques on Fridays before taking to the streets to fire freedom bullets and chant peaceful slogans like the Christians to Beirut, the Alawites to the grave. Syrian society is secular. These protests were sectarian in nature from the start. What I seen, they tried to force people to go out to the street to do uh, what they call a protest, or sometimes to pay them money to come out to the street. The veto. It's so easy for them to show you there is a big fight in any area in Syria. Just they write on Facebook or they talk through the Paltok or any program, they give order to the people to tell them that you have to burn uh, tires or you have to make fake shots. So that's enough to let people, they think there's a big fight in that area. But the question is, who giving the order to these people? Channel 4, manufacturing consent for the UK government's role in the regime change war project in Syria. نحن قاعدين هون بالمكتب الاعلامي مشان نقدر ننشر الخبر بمصداقيه ما بننشر الخبر طبعا الا اذا متاكدين منه 100% Channel 4 have no issue with the gilding of the lily the production of staged events by the Free Syrian Army Like any good reporter he wants to be where the action is Habibi همنا كلمه بس شوي ان نشتغل البيان وكل شيء باب اسبوع ليش عم نجيب لهون من شعل دخني دولاب Omar Talawi has just been a little too candid on camera. Sundown and Omar Talawi is preparing the backdrop for his rooftop report. This is how it appeared on YouTube. As planned, he's gilding the lily. His production team's adding some special effects. The pall of smoke seen rising behind him comes not from a mortar strike, but from an old rubber tire they've set far too below. The burning of tires, Hollywood stagecraft brought to Syria by Western media and its star performers, the moderate rebels. <laughs> Tonight, Omar Talawi told Channel 4 News they'd embellished because they were desperate. The Veto We are not the first victim, actually, uh, of this media. Iraq was a victim, as you know. Libya was, uh, before us, another victim. Uh, Cuba, Venezuela, Iran, and uh, other governments also. Zimbabwe, recently speaking, as you know. Bambi.
user is a social network site. Reporters use it as a substitute to the TV trolley SNG for sharing a footage on the satellite channels. After the footage is sent to BAM user site, satellite channels live stream it or save some segments out of it for a later broadcast. Rafiq was watching and recording through BAM user site what was being prepared and planned between the reporter, the cameraman and the satellite channels throughout the waiting period of the reporter before appearing on the live broadcast. I seen a live stream uh, from Baba Amr uh, at midnight, but I don't know who's behind this camera. Just I see the night, the dark, uh, and there's a little light. So I was watching for at least seven to eight hours. Baba Amr Homs setting the scene for the future of propaganda in Syria. At this time, Rafiq doesn't know what is going to happen or why the camera has been set up in this position. The door opens and somebody enters the room where the camera is. Rafiq's curiosity is aroused. Who is in the room and what are they waiting for? As Rafiq watched the live stream, one question arose. Why was the camera set up in this position and who set it up? In the morning time, I see uh, smoke start to come up. I, I know at that time that something happened. Something major was happening, and as the smoke rises into the morning sky, the long-awaited event seems to be unraveling as Rafiq is watching. It is clear that whoever set up the camera must have known what was about to transpire. After two hours and a half, somebody came back and he fixed the camera to the right position. The smoke converges and expands. The drama unfolds in front of our eyes and the camera captures every moment perfectly. After four to five hours, some people, they came back to the same place where they put the camera. And one of them, he was sick, he's coughing. And uh, there is a woman, she's asking him if he's needs a doctor. Uh, her accent was American. The door opens and people enter the room. Someone is coughing. I follow which channel she, they use this report. I couldn't find for one month. I tried to find, I couldn't find. Then uh, I was checking on the internet, on YouTube. 
then uh, I find who is behind this uh, camera. Rafik had shown the bomb use of raw footage on Syria TV, but he was still trying to identify the English-speaking media team whose voices he had heard on film. His investigations led him to the CNN documentary 72 Hours Under Fire, which was released in March 2012. The billowing smoke was familiar, and after watching the documentary, Rafik was convinced that the mystery voices belonged to CNN correspondent Arwa Damon and her team, but he needed proof. The bombardment started, and at one point there was a, a different kind of explosion or a different kind of noise, mm. and I thought that was odd. It lasted a little bit longer, and I thought perhaps it was two or three impacts coming at the same time or in short succession. A little while later, it happened again. It, it wasn't until the third time it happened that I suddenly realised what it was, and it was thunder, mm. um, but mixed in with the explosions. Right. It was just a, a different experience, and it, it brought a smile to my face lying there, that sort of That's in the darkness. One of the biggest accomplishments for the media team here was getting up a live stream so that they could show the world exactly what was happening in real time. This is one of the live cameras that they had set up outside. Rafik wondered if this was the camera that had produced the footage that he had studied. Off the live camera, someone shouts, they have discovered our position. We see events unravel exactly as Rafiq envisaged. After filming the dramatic fire, Damon's media team returned to the room where their conversations had been recorded, but he still did not have the final proof. They turn off the camera for a while and then after that they start the camera again. One month later, Rafik found a CNN report featuring Ahwa Damon, where they used a segment of the BAMB user footage during the report. The CNN production process will crop the image, but it's clear it is taken from Rafik's archived BAMB user footage. Zoom out to reveal the full picture on Bambuza. Our Damon recycled the same Bambuza footage in another later CNN report taken from the segment before the camera had been turned off. This clearly identifies Damon and her team as the voices speaking in the camera room. Well, that smoke you're seeing rising is from an oil pipeline that is believed to have been hit what we heard was three explosions at around 6.30 in the morning. Shortly thereafter, that thick plume of black smoke began covering the skyline here. Following that, at around 7.30 in the morning began the sustained bombardment 
various sounds of artillery being fired, impacting here, as well as sporadic heavy automatic machine gun fire. Yesterday morning, activists were saying that they counted around 55 explosions in just the span of 15 minutes. Our 55 explosions in 15 minutes works out to be almost uh, four per minute on average. Explosions that were not heard on the Bambusa footage. In fact, nothing interrupted the bird song. The Vito. Free Syrian army fighter claiming the Syrian government has bombed and that there are children killed over there. We see more victims laughing. Another victim falls to the ground, claiming his heart is stopped, but he's laughing. We see free Syrian army fighters carrying children, but we don't see their parents. We just see this guy, he's carrying the kids and running. And now we see him behind the camera. A tour of other media channels who also reported this event reveals the uniform dissemination of an elaborate war theater production as news. Al Jazeera are filming from a nearby building. A mine has been planted in the ground under the building and detonated to give the impression of an airstrike in the Al Jazeera report. Despite all these theatrics captured on Bambusa, the strangely unperturbed Al Jazeera reporter claims that they are under attack by the Syrian Arab army. The infamous Danny Abdeldeim is also present during the same event. He witnesses the drama from another angle. Danny is accompanied by an armed fighter from the Free Syrian Army, whom he later introduces as a civilian, but only after he has removed his militant jacket. This is one of the civilians that lives in Baba Amr. That's a, saying, that's a pipeline, that's a petrol line at the security forces that shot. According to Danny, the pipeline was hit by a Syrian army mortar bomb or tank shell. It's funny. This guy, one time you see him driving a tank on CNN and other time you see him as a witness. Al Arabiya claim attacks by the Syrian Air Force, another variation on the theme. <laughs>
This video was provided by people living in Baba Amru during this time in 2012. It shows that civilians flocked to the deliberately flooded oil ducts to steal the oil just before it was set alight. Where are the multiple attacks described by CNN's Awa Damon? We visited the location of the blazing oil pipes in January 2018. Yeah. They make a hole with this yeah, pipe. Yeah, yeah. And they fill this, this river with the oil, uh -huh. then they burn it. This was not a Syrian army attack. It was a fabricated event. To get to the upper floors, you really have to hug the wall because there's one window that's exposed. But Back in the media house, Awa Damon hugs the wall to avoid Syrian Arab army snipers. What she fails to tell her audience is at this point, the Syrian Arab army is positioned on the outskirts of Baba Amr and would not be able to snipe this area, which was fully occupied by the Free Syrian Army. Arwa Demin, she's making a show. She was safe all the time. She is doing this to let people think she is a superwoman. It's incredible. How could people do something like this? The veto. The Western media has played a very negative role in the war on Syria, and it costs us many lives, but it costs the West a lot as well. It costs the Western media its credibility. I don't think intelligent people now sit in front of CNN or BBC and take what they say for granted. I think now we have many questions about anything they put on TV because we saw for ourselves how fabrications are being put on their TVs. The Western media might be independent, internally speaking, domestically speaking, but not when it is related to the international relationship. Dani Abdeldaim, he worked for CNN too, and he was the biggest liar because he fabricated a lot of things in homes, and he tried to make fake shots to let people think that the Syrian army, they are shooting at him or in that area. Danny Abdul Dayan, relaxed in a war zone, waiting to report for CNN. <laughs> Danny tells us he is cold. He asks for a bed. <laughs> the cameraman is feeding him his lines. The buildings are destroyed. They're pulling out the bodies. Danny asks if they got the target ready. He gives the instruction to shoot. All this time, Danny is not under attack. After being on hold for 25 minutes, Danny goes live. On the left is the BAMB user live stream footage. On the right is the CNN official report. What's been happening, right? 
uh, they've been bomb uh, they've been bombarding an area in Homs called Khadi for like three hours. Uh, they've been bombarding with mortar bombs and tank shells, T-72 tank shells. Now we've got about 200 dead all around Homs. There's still people underneath the destru destruction. We can't move them. There's still civilians under the destruction of buildings. We can't get them out. We're trying to get medication in there and food in there, and we can't get them in. The snipers are shooting at us. I'm in Baba Amr now. So how, yeah. how random is this mortar fire? I mean, are, the, are you saying that they're just indiscriminately firing mortars into, into neighborhood? In the cities, in the cities, in the narrow, in the narrow civilian streets, on on rooftops. I just went an hour ago. I just went on a rooftop to get civilians. It's, the street is right next to me, in the, like 200, like 400 meters right over there. I went and picked up four civilians who were burning in the house. A mortar bomb came right on the rooftop of a civilian house. We smuggle the wounded. We smuggle the dead bodies into the area I'm in now, which is Baba Amr which is protected by the Free Army, but the Free Army hasn't got that heavy artillery, or they have uh, clashing calls. After Rafiq had exposed Danny's fake news report on Syria TV, CNN's Anderson Cooper invited Danny into the studio to explain what had happened to their viewers. Denny, Syrian state television, as you know, is now airing uh, excerpts of, uh, of this video of you uh, that was shot. Uh, I'm not sure how they got uh, this video. Do you know how they got it? Did they intercept it? Um, while I was trying to talk to CNN, I was online for like 20 minutes. So it's live broadcast. I don't know how they got it. We was, this is all private. See, we should have. This has all been deleted. We have to delete all this stuff. If Danny is doing the right things, why these files should be deleted and why it's a private? say one point, and I'm going to show this, they say that you were saying, get the target ready to shoot. Right. No, no, shoot it like I'm telling you. Let's right. take a look. And then the, the banner in Arabic says, notice the sound of an explosion after he gave the order. They're making it seem like you were fabricating the sound of explosion. Yes. Okay. If you exactly watch the, the, it was about six minutes I was talking to you actually on CNN at that time. There was no shooting going on at the time. So if I was, was telling him to shoot so I can make it look like there's a war going on, uh, there would be shooting on the back, uh, on the back sound while I was talking to you. The problem here is ask him, did you get the target ready? Shoot. Why he's saying shoot? Why Anderson, he didn't ask this question? Th they said the sound of the bang there was the sound of you guys no, faking a shot. That, that was the sound a long way ago. Even at the time, the area I was sitting in wasn't even being hit. They were hitting another area, as I told you, it was called Khaldi. It's about 15 kilometers away from where I am. 15 kilometers away from where I am. When he asked him, he told him there is nothing happening in that area when we was there. And it was far at least 15 kilometers and in the report what he said he said it's right next to me 200 to 400 meters in the cities in the cities in the narrow in the narrow civilian streets on on rooftops i just went an hour ago i just went on a rooftop to get civilians the street is right next to me in the, like 200 like 400 meters right over there i went and picked up four civilians I want to play another part of this, uh, of, of their tape. Your cameraman is saying, say there that shells fell and we are pulling bodies. Let's take a look. The, the banner there says even the cameraman is lying. What was happening there? Uh, look, as any journalist works, as anyone who's trying to work, it isn't just me, all the reporters inside, they tell us, uh, you have to say this. This is actually what's going on. I don't know everything that's going on in there. They get the information, how many people have been killed. So I'm not really a reporter. They remind me, don't forget to say this. Tell them there's, we have people dead, people underneath the destruction. So I don't forget. Danny just said he is not a reporter. He is being fed unverified information. CNN is using this information in their reports with no verification. This is not journalism. It is not even activism. It is distortion and manipulation. You said you had left, I believe in the video, because you, you and I are about to talk in this video, you said you had actually left the area that was being under attack. Right, I left it. No, I tried to go there. I said I tried to go there. I was mm -hmm. there two hours ago. Okay. We had to leave and they were sure us way out, way in. No one could get in there. Then he told him in the report that he'd been in Al-Khaldiyah before one hour 
and now he's telling him he never been there. Okay, if you never been there, how come the cameraman he's telling you, tell him the building is destroyed and we are pulling the bodies? The Syrian state TV is claiming, uh, besides the lie that Danny works for CNN, is that he was faking the sound of gunfire or shelling. Now, you heard Danny mention that if you look at the interview we actually did that we aired on CNN with, with him that night, you don't hear any gunfire in the background. We went back, we watched the nearly seven minute interview, and he was actually correct. There is no fire in the background. Anderson Cooper makes the claim that no shooting was heard in Danny's report. But if we rewatch, we do hear shooting throughout. Water pumps and tank shells, tanks, T 72s. Uh, in the first half an hour, we've got, now we've got about 200 dead all around pumps. There's still people underneath the destruction that are sitting and discussing while we're just getting here, sitting here and getting killed. Officers are shooting at me. I'm in Baba Amr now. Yeah. That means not only Danny, he is lying. Anderson Cooper, also he's lying. They also say that you are basically have been paid by CNN. Yeah. Um, that's categorically untrue. Just for the record, of course, the have record. you ever worked for CNN? Have you ever received any money from CNN? I have not received one penny for CNN. I am not a CNN journalist. W one of the frustrating things as a reporter is that, uh, and, and for this we blame the Syrian regime, is we've repeatedly tried to go to homes to get into Syria to get visas to do it the proper way and they were repeatedly refusing so unlike in many conflicts we have ended up relying on, on us. A people like you on people who have uploaded these I videos know. and though we can independently verify them of course Anderson you are biased and taking side and you shouldn't do that because I'm you taking are the side of the truth and, and, and I, I gotta say I just think you, what you're saying you, just this you is have not, not offered any proof this is not the truth I am afraid this is not the truth. You are reporting what somebody uh, told you. <laughs> this shouldn't be done on CNN. Unlike in many conflicts, we have ended up relying on, on us. A people like you, on people who have uploaded these I videos, know. and though we can't independently verify them, of course. the reason we are relying on these videos is because of the Syrian regime's refusal to allow outside observers right. in. You are reporting what somebody uh, told you. <laughs> this shouldn't be done on CNN. Anderson Cooper said the government they don't give visa and they don't allow them to come here. And the question is, how come Arwa Dawan, before she go to Baba Amr, she get proof and the government they allowed her to come with her team? She joins us now from the capital. What is the mood? What's the picture there? Our the familiar Western journalist visa denied Canard from CNN. In fact, the Syrian government had approved a visa for Awa Damon many times before 2012. The following report from Damon was broadcast from inside Damascus. Okay, I, I, I wanted to get this message out a long time ago. We actually, it's to all the European countries and the Arab countries. Just make, let us know. You're either going to help us or you're not. They're leaving us stuck in the middle. They're always saying, we're going to do this, and no, we're not. Either tell us you're going to help us or say, no, you're on your own. Just let us know what we are going to do. We're going to die or you're going to help us. Stop saying we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Let us know what we are going to do, what our path is. CNN have attempted to erase elements of interviews with Danny, but unsuccessfully. Independent YouTube accounts have downloaded these interviews in full and added Arabic subtitles. CNN have removed many such reports from their website. Why? The Veto. We uh, built some kind of strong credibility, even among those who targeted us from the beginning. It happened to me, for instance, personally speaking, many times after delivering my statement or my speech before the General Assembly or the Security Council. Uh, many ambassadors of countries hostile to the Syrian government came to me and congratulated me on the content of my statement. And said to me, sorry Mr. Ambassador, uh, we are taking 
such a profile, hostile profile towards your government and your country. But indeed, we know the truth. We know that the, 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 the story is totally different. In some cases, uh, representatives from uh, Arab hostile governments came to me. Some of them were members of the Security Council. They came to me and uh, apologized. Mr. Ambassador, we are sorry. Uh, we know that what we are telling uh, before the Security Council is not accurate. But this is, this is life. أخبرنا عن الواقع الآن هل ما زال القصف مستمرا في هذه الأحياء؟ يبدو أننا نسمع الجواب مباشرة هل أنت في مكان آمن؟ سيد خالد أبو صلاح سيدتي حتى الآن لم يهدأ القصف عن حي الخالدية لقد One of the most important channels they worked against Syria was Al Jazeera. And they used Khaled Abu Salah in homes to work for them. Khaled Abu Salah, he fabricated a lot of stories and a lot of things in Baba Amr. And they used to work together, he and Danny. And I remember when I was watching them on, uh, on the bomb user, I seen Khaled Abu Salah, he was give a sign to the people over there to shoot and to try to show the people that there is a big fight in that area. Just as with Danny, we see Abu Salah and his team discussing the numbers of dead they should report. No fact-checking, simply which number has most impact. Just as with Dani, there is no conflict in the area. Abu Salah is also waiting to go live for CNN. Abu Salah, signal to shoot, is obvious for those with eyes to see. A shadowy figure enters the building before the shots ring out from inside the building. طيب يعني أخبرنا عن الواقع الآن هل ما زال القصف مستمرا في هذه الأحياء؟ يبدو أننا نسمع الجواب مباشرة هل أنت في مكان آمن؟ سيد خالد أبو صلاح سيدتي حتى الآن لم يهدأ القصف عن حي الخالدية لقد سيدتي 
اسماء اصوات اطلاق رصاص لا استطيع ان اسمعكم جيدا. سيدتي الكريمه حتى الان لم يهدا القصف على احياء حمص، حتى الان لا تم تحصيل نهائيا للشهداء، هناك مجزرة مروعه في حي الخالدية. Al Jazeera said it's life from Al Khaldiyeh, but the truth, Khad Abu Salah, he never been in Al Khaldiyeh, Danny Abdul Daim, he never go to Al Khaldiyeh, and both of them, they are lying. Was the uptick in propaganda a coincidence? Just as Russia and China were vetoing a UN Security Council resolution demanding that the Syrian president step down, Channel 4 was correct. The rebels were desperate, desperate to influence decisions on behalf of their sponsors in the U.S. regime change coalition. The veto. If you look at the, at the current situation right now, you would see that there is an attempt of interfering into the domestic affairs of Iran, Venezuela, Ecuador, as well as other countries, as you know. Even, even Russia, even Iran, uh, through what they call sanctions, Ill Ill illegitimate sanctions. So the, the war is open actually, and there is a huge level degree of tension in the international relationship. That would create some kind of incentives of the public opinion uh, in the world to wake up finally and to realize that something wrong is taking place because the humanity wouldn't afford a new war. Any new war uh, generalized war would mean uh, the, the end of the, of the world. Hey, Baba Amr. One of the people who are in this place, the Hey, Baba Amr. You can see here they bring someone from what they call the Free Syrian Army to use him as a sniper to let people think that's the Syrian Army they are shooting the people. نحن الآن نلتقي مع أحد عناصر جيش الحر في حي باب عمر. نحن من حي أهل باب عمر الأبطال والشجعان اللي صمدوا هالصمود ال 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 يعني الأوي كثير. أحد الجناص المتواجدة في هذا الحي في حي باب عمر ورغم على صوت الله أكبر في هذا الحي. That's the same sniper, but this time you can see him between what they call the Free Syrian Army. The Veto Khaled Abu Salah, he did the same thing in the hospital, or what they call a hospital in Baba Amr. So they bring some people and they try to show that there are some of them, you know, he had injuries, some of them he have a broke arm or whatever. And they threw some bloods and they bring, they bring one kid and they teach her what she have to say against the president, against the wife of the president, against the government. <laughs> war to save the children. Children have been exploited throughout the Syrian conflict to promote war to kill more children. Same like Danny, you can see the cameraman, he's teaching a doctor what he's supposed to say. Khaled Abu Saleh, an Al Jazeera stringer, inside a house that had been converted into what appears to be a makeshift clinic. Hey, Abu 
الله الحمد لله رب العالمين this footage is from Bambusa before the live report on Al Jazeera. The victims on screen are being rehearsed. Are you smart or not? The director asks a small child, her head swaddled in bandages. Naham is given her lines. She must insult President Assad and his wife. A child is being schooled to hate with words she does not understand. What did we do for you to treat us like this? This little girl asks, her head bandaged after injuries to her eye. We can't tell if she's being prompted to speak out against the Assad regime, but the pain and misery emanating from Syria is echoed in various videos posted to YouTube. This clip also from Holmes, a child whose leg has been blown off. Look, the same lies you see it on Al Jazeera, you see it on CNN too, with the same people. That means who controls CNN, he controls Al Jazeera. The veto. Honestly, practically speaking, the council is not implementing and the, the, the policy enshrined in the Charter, which is maintaining peace and security. How could the Security Council maintain the peace and security in the world while demolishing Libya, while demolishing Iraq, disintegrating Iraq, disintegrating Libya, targeting Syria uh, from, from within and as well as from outside? So this is not manta about maintaining peace and security. This is representing the impacts of the influence of the influential states within the Security Council on the decision-making mechanism. حمص هذا الصباح على وقع حادث مروع اخر في حيي كرم الزيتون والعدوية فعشرات الجثث التي عثر عليها تروي فظاعة ما وقع في المدينة المنكوبة التي لا زالت مسرحا لعمليات عسكرية يشنها الجيش السوري النظامي على ما يقول انها عصابات مسلحة يقتلون يا اخي يقتلون بدم بارد هذه مجازر مروعة تحصل هذه وصمة عام على سبيل الجامعة العربية وعلى كل انسان يدعي الانسانية في في هذا الزمان is that this was a massacre that was carried out at the hands of government forces and Shabiha. Well, but both sides are saying that the other is responsible. When I heard about the massacre, right away I checked on the BAM user. Voice and picture was cutting at that time.
I took the film and I used a special program to connect the voice to know what's going on. I hear shooting. I asked myself at that time, from where the shooting? It was too close. I've seen they are trying to hide something because they put two covers then they drag the other one. The blood still coming out. Then I understand they are killing the people outside, then they bring them inside. So when we consider the seven years of war, how the propaganda started in 2011 and how it is today, what is very important for us to recognize is that the level of fabrication, the use particularly of children in this fabrication. The veto. It never came to my mind uh, at any time, even in the worst moments of 2011, that uh, Syria was shaking or going to lose uh, uh, the war. I always believed that we will have the upper hand over this international war of terror because we are not newcomers to the international diplomacy. We live in the kitchen in, the, in New York, so we know what is the menu. From the beginning, we knew what, what would be the menu. And uh, thanks God, we were able to choose uh, what we want to eat and we were able to reject what our enemies wanted us to eat. They were not able to destroy Syria the way they wanted to destroy it. They were not able to um, put the government they want, the system they want, uh, to change the system. In one sentence, to change the independence of decision-making. They wanted puppets. So in this sense, Syria is independent, Syria has kept its independent decision, Syria has proved that it was able to defeat terrorism, it was able to liberate most of its land, and hopefully we will liberate every inch of our land in the near future. And um, we proved to the world that despite all this coalition, despite billions of dollars, despite all the work they put, we, the small people of Syria, were able to defeat them all because we are right and because we are defending our land and our country. Now that includes Omran. And what strikes me is we shed tears, but there are no tears here. He doesn't cry once. That little boy is in total shock. He's stunned inside his home one moment and the next lost in the, fl in the flurry and the fury of war and chaos. Omran was exploited. Why no tears of joy from CNN when he was discovered alive and happy and perfectly safe with his family in Aleppo after liberation by the Syrian Arab army? While Western media accused the Syrian government of this attack on Omran, his father was demanding proof from the terrorist groups. 
proof that was never shown to him. I was in my heart and I was in my heart. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? I don't know. شغلة تانية أنا طلبت من الإعلاميين اللي كانوا موجودين هناك والمسلحين يطالعوا آثار البقايا مثلا الصاروخ أو الضرب اللي عم يدعوه أي شيء يطالعوا البقايا مشان أنا بدي أحكي معه على أساس نصرح ورفضوا يطالعوا أي شيء. عمران is now a well balanced, relaxed child. He escaped the Western war lobby propaganda mill. Others have not been so fortunate. وقت اللي اخذوا عمران مشان يسعفوه، قبل ما يسعفوه حطوه على بصوروه. لان اليوم الصوره وقت اللي عم في عليها ثمن. اللقطه اللي بتشتغل بالعاطفه على العاطفه هي لها ثمن. في منهم عم بيشتغلوا مع بعض بهالامر بين الصحافه وقبعات البيت. هالصوره ليش؟ هالصوره هي عباره مشان يتاجروا في دمه انه اللي هو تصوب وهو انضرب واصابته ثقيله و... والحمد لله اصابته هو خفيفه يعني هل تجاره بهالامر وبدون ما ياخذوا اذني وبدون ما يقولوا لي وبدون ما يكون لي اي خبر I don't think now they need someone like Arwa or Dani or Khada Abu Salah. They need people more experienced. They know how to lie. They know how to fabricate things. And they already exist something like that. They call the white helmets. <laughs> Look at her. She's clean and the doll still in her hand. Battles were fabricated, empty buildings were mined and fired upon to produce the spine-tingling battle scenes relayed to the world by Western corporate media. People have been fed a distorted version of events in Syria for seven years. This conflict has been maintained by propaganda on an unprecedented scale. <laughs> Created in March 2013, in Turkey and Jordan, the White Helmets are promoted and financed by the same nations who desire regime change in Syria. They are embedded exclusively with terrorist factions in Syria. The White Helmets are a propaganda factory for the West. According to Syrian civilians, they do not rescue civilians. They leave them under the rubble to die. Described by many as Nusra Front with a facelift, their productions feature endless child rescues. Nobody ever questions where these children come from. Where are their parents? We have been hypnotized into not questioning what we see. We need to start looking more closely at the cropped and edited images that are designed to take us to war. Now and after all the work that Rafiq Lutuf did and Danisa Bailey did and all the respectable uh, journalists in the world did about uh, the white helmets, there's no doubt at all that the white helmets are like ISIS, like ISIL, like uh, Rabhat al-Nusra, um, being used by 
certain countries, by certain powers, in order to instigate terrorism in Syria and in order to achieve political objectives through the use of terrorism. This is an absolute fact, you know, we can't go through all what uh, happened during the war, although uh, you did in your film investigate and correct many of the uh, of the of the incidents uh, which uh, appeared on CNN and others but in fact we need probably 10 films or 20 films to correct all what has been circulated and promoted which was sheer propaganda and absolutely irrelevant to the reality of what has taken place in Syria we watch very carefully the Iraqi case and the Libyan case so we didn't allow them to repeat with us the same mistakes. So we have to ask ourselves, how much of what you've been told about Syria is true? How much of it is a fabrication? And to what extent have children been exploited to promote this war that has effectively caused the deaths of so many children inside Syria? The Veto. If we didn't have these strong allies using their vetoes against conspiracies uh, uh, concocted by the Western uh, delegations and the Council, the situation would have been much, much worse than what we have seen so far. وإلى كل طاغية وعلى رأسهم أمريكا ولمن لف لفهم وداره ودار في فلكهم When they say that Russia has come into Syria in 2015. I say no, Russia and China started playing the role in 2011. And had it not been for that, probably we would have faced a very, very difficult reality in Syria. The people we are fighting today, we funded. We funded. Only Russia and China used to take a strong uh, position defending the Syrian government. Nowadays we have six, seven countries in the Council. Either they vote against draft resolutions targeting the Syrian government, or they abstain. And they make strong statements, saying, for instance, after years of denial of the existence of terrorism in Syria. Many countries in the Council now, when they make their speeches, they say the Syrian government has uh, uh, said something very important about the uh, phenomenon of international terrorism, for instance. Why don't we listen to what they are saying? Why don't we double-check whether what they are saying is accurate or not? This kind of language didn't exist in 2011 or 2012. There was a total denial of the phenomenon of international terrorism. Nowadays, they compete with each other on who would focus more on combating and fighting international terrorism. That means we won the war. I would like to say to each and every member of Security Council that when you put your hand up, you should think of the souls of children, and women, and people, of the innocent souls you are affecting. And you should ask yourself, are you putting your hand up in order to make peace more possible? Or are you putting your hand up in order to make the killing of people easier? It is a huge moral responsibility on the conscience of those who are members of the Security Council, and not to engage in hypocritical uh, phrases and speeches, which mean nothing to people 
who are facing wars and who are facing terrorism. What means to us is the real stand, the honest stand, the transparent stand. That is what, what is important for us. And we are at a point in time where no one can mislead the other. If they think that the speeches and acting as if one is acting in Hollywood is going to convince people that they are on the right side of history, it no longer works. Small children in the most distant village in Syria know exactly what's going on. So please do not try to be smart and do not think yourself smarter than others. People who live on the ground and who suffer what they are suffering are smarter than anybody because it's their lives that are at stake. Syria has been battered by seven years of a brutal war it did not create. Syria has survived a war that has decimated infrastructure and laid waste to its history and heritage. Hundreds of thousands of lives have been lost, the vast majority from the Syrian Arab army, which is the Syrian people. Yet this wave of internationally financed and armed terrorism will also threaten our own communities if it is not contained. Our governments have created and promoted a monster which Syria and her allies have given their lives to destroy. Our national security has been defended by Syria against the criminal intent of our own rogue states. Syria is rising from the blood of her people, bloodshed that has been enabled by the revolution illusion sold to us by corporate media in the West. Questioning these manufactured narratives is the only way to end this conflict and to allow Syrians to breathe, to survive, and to rebuild their shattered lives. Syria needs you. They destroyed a lot. They destroyed our infrastructure. They destroyed our school. They destroyed our pipeline. They stole our history. They stole our most precious monuments. So there is a huge amount of work that needs to be done. We have also a lost generation of the war. We have children who were seven and now they are 15. And those people need social work, psychological work, educational work. I don't know what destroying a pipeline has to do with people's rights. I don't know what destroying factories, what stealing Palmyra, stealing, today they are stealing uh, the, the castle of Sermad. They, they stole monuments from Idlib, from Aleppo. This is our history. This is our identity that they are stealing. And this is extremely sad for us. It needs a huge amount of work on the local level, on the regional level, on the international level, in order to restore Syria, hopefully, to a country that is better than what it was, and to give the world an example that if people decide to be free, independent, nobody can conquer them. Nobody can conquer them. We wanted the UN to help, which they didn't. We wanted the UN to take the case from the beginning, which they didn't. They took it and they did nothing about it. What about the United States? If they can help. <laughs> who take help from anyone, Israel, we, 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 don't, we don't care. What do you think is going to stop the regime at this point? I mean, anything? An attack. Vito! I'm not talking now as a journalist, I'm talking as a Syrian citizen, because I'm born in this country and I love this country. Please stop lying, stop killing. Stop doing this to my country. You know why? Because at the end, we are the real veto. We are the real veto. أستاذ رفيق أنا رافقتك بكثير من مقابلاتك الإعلامية خلال الحرب وبالأيام الصعبة خصوصا في حمص مدينتي وأنا بعتقد أنه العمل يلي قمت فيه هو العمل الذي 
يجب أن يقوم به الإعلام الحقيقي والله جميل مهم متعوب عليه جدا وعجبني أنه بالإنجليزي لأنه نحن بدنا نوصل للرأي العام الغربي أحد أسباب نجاح الإعلام الغربي هو عدم قدرتنا للنفاذ إلى ذلك الإعلام فأنت معناتها نجعت في أنك نقلت المعركة إلى صفوفهم هن. أي عمل تحقيقي عمل يتأكد من الكلمة من المعلومة من المشهد قبل أن يبث أي شيء على التلفزيون وأكثر من هيك سأعرض لك الفيلم داخل الأمم المتحدة The true revolution does not only come out of the mosques carrying a Wahhabism, Salafi, Takfiri thoughts. It should include university, culture center, and national parties, which did not happen in Syria. I was born in Syria, and I love Syria. So I say to those people who support in the white helmets, please stop lying, stop killing, stop doing this to my country. You will reach nowhere. You know why? Because in the end, we are the real veto. The Veto.